In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate the basics of intarsia color work, also known as color block knitting. If you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, you can tap or mouse over the video playback area of the screen to reveal the chapter titles and starting points of each section. This is a piece of knitted fabric that I created using a color work technique called intarsia. It's also uh, called color block knitting and in some cases it might be called picture knitting. This type of color work is created very differently from stranded color work knitting. They are very different processes. For intarsia, each area that is in a specific color has its own yarn source, its own little ball of yarn. So in order to work across this row where I have uh, gray, yellow, purple, and then gray again, each of these gray areas has its own ball of yarn that is used to work uh, that block of color. The back side of intarsia is very much like solid color stockinette. You see all of the pearl bumps. Uh, you do have these little blips of color where you transition from one color to the other, but otherwise the back side really reflects what the front side looks like in terms of those blocks of color. So when you are working in intarsia, there's typically a background color that you establish and then at some point you begin your uh, color work process. So I have a swatch here where I start out with garter stitch and I have uh, worked across um, uh, with some stockinette and I'm ready to start a right side row right here. So I'm going to work my garter stitch border and then I'm going to work uh, four colors of this white and then I'm going to join the blue, uh, work across for six stitches, then switch to green for six stitches and then I'm going to end with the white. Okay, I'm at the point where now I need to work six stitches in um, the blue. So there are a couple of ways to start working with a new color. One is to just start working with it and letting the tail hang, but you can just tie it around like this with a half knot and then slide it up to the top. And that will put a little bit of tension on that yarn tail so you don't have to worry about it getting uh, uh, too short as you're working the first few stitches. So now you just work across those six stitches. And now you want to join the green. And again, you could just join it and start working and let the tail hang, hang or you could uh, tie it around um, the old strand of yarn and then slide it up. So I'm going to switch to using continental here just because you can do it either way. Knitting the stitches, you just knit them however you knit them with the yarn in the right hand or the yarn in the left hand. And now we have this final area of white and we're going to join uh, this color the same way. We're just gonna tie it to the old color. So we finished this first row. Let's look at the second row of the chart. In the second row of the chart, we're going to be coming from this direction on the wrong side of the work. So we're going to be working five stitches. So we're going to uh, get to that very first a green stitch and we're going to work it as a white stitch and then we're going to, to switch to the green. And then we're going to switch to the blue. And we're going to work it one stitch fewer than what we had worked on the first row when we switched to the white. So purl across using whichever knitting style you have, English or continental, whether you hold the yarn in the right hand or the left hand, it doesn't matter. Okay, so here is where we need to work this green stitch as a white stitch. So we're gonna continue doing that. And now, so I have the yarn in my left hand because I'm, I'm purling with my left hand. What I wanna do now is keep that yarn in my left hand, the old yarn in my left hand, while I pick up the new color with my right hand. And then I'm going to drop that. 
and switch this over to my left hand. So you see what's happening here is these two colors are getting linked together like that. And that is going to prevent a hole um, between those two colors when, when they are worked. So now I can continue on. Let me switch to um, purling in my right hand so you can see how this process works um, if, you, or if you knit with the yarn in your right hand. So right here, we're at the middle of the triangle. So it's time to switch to the blue yarn. So the color I've been using is, my, is in my right hand. I want to move that to my left hand. You always want the old color in your left hand when you pick up the new color in your right hand, regardless of which hand you use to actually knit the yarn. At the transition, you always want the old color in your left hand and then pick up the new color with your right hand. And for this color, we are stopping one stitch short. because we need to start working the white right now. So again, we've got the old color in our right hand. We wanna move it to the left hand, and then we're gonna pick up the new color in our right hand. If I'm knitting with the yarn in my right hand, I'm gonna keep the old yarn in my left hand, just keep some tension on it for a couple of stitches. And then you can continue on to the end of the row. So now we have a right side row, we're going to work across and we have to work one stitch more in white than, um, than we had on the previous row. So we're just going to keep going. And I've got the old color in my left hand and I need to pick up the new one and you're going to see that you see how that blue stitch got kind of loose and that's because the yarn was just hanging and the act of knitting this one caused that to be looser. So you can just snug that up a little bit um, before you start working with uh, the new color. So I want to pick up the new color in my right hand before I drop the left one and then I'm going to, to um, move it over here so that I can continue working in continental. Now you you might want to just hold on to this yarn a little bit in your right hand to help give that stitch some resistance as you are knitting, or you can just let it dangle either way. So now we've gotten to the point where we need to transition. So we pick up the green right here, and then we can drop the blue and bring that over this way. And what that does is it links these two colors together right here. You need that, you need those two colors to be linked together so that you don't end up with a hole between these two stitches. If we look at other stitches that are done in a solid color, they have this running thread that connects one stitch to the next. But when you are at a transition point between a blue and a green here, there is no strand that is going to connect them unless you link those two colors together when you switch. So that's why we always either keep the yarn, old yarn in our left hand or put the old yarn in our left hand um, before we pick up the new color in our right hand because that process is going to uh, link the two colors together. Now I need to switch to the white so I'm going to keep the green in my left hand and pick up the white in my right hand and that's going to uh, create the link between those two colors. One unfortunate truth about intarsia is that because you have so many different balls of color, you will have a number of ends to weave in. Uh, I would suggest weaving them in as you go progress through your project rather than leaving them for the very end. So remember, when we were joining these colors, we created a half knot. Before you weave in the ends, you're going to want to undo those half knots. Uh, I've done I've undone the one uh, on this end, but I did leave it looped through that a white loop just to keep, uh, make sure that there were not going to be any holes remaining. So I'm going to undo this 
uh, yarn tail. You, like a, you can leave this loop, um, looped through that just to make sure that there's not going to be any holes later. And then you're going to want to weave in the yarn tail in through the backs of the stitches that are of the same color just to make sure that nothing is peeking through uh, the front. Sometimes if you weave in a darker color on the back side of a very light color, it will show through in the front. And sometimes this can be really tricky to do and so you, you, might, you might have very small areas that you have to try to weave in ends. Uh, one thing that you can do if you have that situation is that you can split the plies and that gives you something very small and, and thin and in that case you can skim through the backs of these kinds of stitches that are lighter in color and it's less likely to show through to the front. One of the characteristics of intarsia knitting is that it has to be worked back and forth. When we worked across the first row of the triangle, we were starting over here on the right edge of the chart and we were working in this direction. So the first stitch that we worked in the blue color was in column number five, and then the last stitch was in column number 10, and that's where we dropped the yarn. Then we joined the green here in column 11 and we worked across to 16, and then we dropped that. So the blue yarn was hanging here at column number 10 and the green yarn was hanging here at column 16. When we worked the next row, we were working in the reverse order across these columns of stitches. So when we got to column number 16, the yarn was hanging there. We actually didn't need to work it until stitch 15, but the yarn was right very close to where we needed to work it. And when we got to where we needed to work the blue, it was exactly in the spot that we needed to work it uh, back in that direction. When you work in the round with the right side always facing you, you are always working from right to left across the stitches. So you always start with column number one and you'd always end with column number 20. So the problem with working a color pattern like this in the round is that if I were coming from here and working across the white stitches and I got to the point where I needed a blue one, the blue yarn wouldn't be hanging here. It would be hanging over here. So this is why you need to work it back and forth. Now it is possible to create a tube while you are working back and forth. So there are a couple of different approaches uh, for creating a tube while you are working in Tarsha. But regardless of which of those techniques that you use, you are still working in rows of knits and rows of pearls. So this is an example of a hat where I was knitting in the round to start with the black. And then when I got to the face of the dog, I began working it back and forth. I created an extra stitch at the beginning of the round. Then I worked back and forth to create the majority of the dog face. And then I returned to working in the round and decreased out that extra stitch and then finished off the hat. Then I just did a little seam up the back in order to, to close the flat portion and then for little small areas, uh, I did not work in Tarsha, the eyebrows right here in the mouth. I actually worked that, those areas using a technique called duplicate stitch, where you can add just very small areas of color uh, after the fact. So this helps reduce the number of balls of yarn that you have to have in play uh, when you are working in a Tarsha. And it also allows you to create little motifs of knitting when you are working in the round and you can add those little motifs after the fact. It's a, a technique that I used when I knit these little mittens here. I did the mittens in the round and then I added the little paw prints using duplicate stitch. I did do a Technique Tuesday on duplicate stitch a couple of weeks ago which I will link to above and also down in the video description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you next time.